The current situation right now in the cancer field is that cancer is a genetic disease. If you go to the National Cancer Institute website, the NCI website, it says cancer is a genetic disease caused by somatic mutations, mutations that occur in cells of our tissues and organs, leading to dysregulated cell growth. Uh, so the definition of cancer is dysregulated cell growth or cell growth out of control. That's the definition of cancer. The theory that says what causes cells to grow out of control is the somatic mutation theory, that mutations in the DNA that control uh, regulate, the regulation of the cell cycle uh, uh, are, the, are responsible for this dysregulated cell growth. Um, the uh, alternative theory, which is the one uh, we support and the one that Otto Warburg originally defined, was that cancer uh, arises as a, uh, an effect of the damage to our energy producing organelle in the cell, the, the organelle that makes energy from oxygen. And uh, we and others have shown that when that organelle becomes chronically corrupted, uh, it leads to these reactive oxygen species, ROS, that are carcinogenic and mutagenic. They damage DNA, they damage proteins, they damage lipids. So the mutations in the nucleus are not the cause of cancer, but an effect of the damage to respiration. So this is two, contra two totally different explanations for the same phenomenon. In one theory, the somatic mutation theory, which is supported by all major medical schools and the National Cancer Institute, is that the dysregulated growth, cancer, is caused by mutations in the DNA of the nucleus uh, of the cell. The mitochondrial metabolic theory says no, that's not true. The mutations are secondary downstream effects of, um, uh, of the uh, disrupt, disruption oxidative phosphorylation. So, um, so this is the alternative two views of the origin of cancer. Um, so we have two alternative views for the same phenomenon. And in my view, if it's a mitochondrial metabolic disease, that means people can take charge and, and, and uh, essentially participate in the management uh, of their disorder. Because the tumor cell having defect in generating energy from oxygen uh, falls back on ancient fermentation pathways, which was energy without oxygen. Like all cells on the planet used energy without oxygen before oxygen came into the atmosphere in the early uh, development of life on Earth. So these cancer cells are fall essentially falling back on ancient pathways of fermentation. And then you say, well, what does that mean? Well, what do they use to get energy? And energy is everything. Listen, without energy, right. we die quick. And you want to know how fast that is. People who drink Kool-Aid uh, with la laced with cyanide, uh, drinking the Kool-Aid la laced with cyanide, Jones, Jonestown, Jonestown, everybody was dead instantly, yeah. very quickly. Okay, that's what me that's what happens when you have no energy. Cancer cells can live in hypoxia. They can live in cyanide. They don't need that form of energy. They for they ferment. They use ancient pathways of energy, and those driven by the sugar glucose and the amino acid glutamine. So uh, the solution or a strategy, an effective, I don't want to say solution, but it's certainly a, an effective strategy for cancer management uh, involves transitioning the whole body over to a, a respiratory fuel like fatty acids or ketones, and then selectively targeting the glucose and the glutamine, thereby protecting the normal cells while we uh, starve and marginalize the tumor cells and the body will gradually eliminate them. Uh, from the body. Now, now, yeah, sure, you can use radiation and chemo and all this other stuff, um, which will certainly kill cancer cells, as you're an example of that, a survivor. But you can also kill them by taking away their fermentable fuels. And blood cancers are remarkably dependent on glutamine so uh, I, and glucose. So all cancer, we can't find any tumor that can use uh, oxygen for energy sufficiently. So they're all essentially dependent on this fermentation metabolism. And the theory that describes that is called the mitochondrial metabolic theory of cancer, as opposed to the somatic mutation theory. These are two r radically different ways of looking at the same problem.